What does the title signify? Birth. Here the title signifies the birth of a stillborn child. And secondly, it's the birth of a doctor. The doctor was able to realize how worthy he is, how useful he is, what birth he has. So it was the realization which dawned upon him that he has been able to do something for the humanity. Birth chapter is all about the birth or the revival of a stillborn child. And that was because of the efforts, dedication, commitment of the doctor because the doctor believed that he must not give, in, give up. So that's why the child was able to be revived. And secondly, it is the birth of the doctor also because the doctor otherwise would have remained a very common or a common kinds of doctor if he had not put in his best. So the idea is that anyone whosoever puts in his or her best, one can come out of the, come out of one's shell and that shell keeps one otherwise remain a normal person. In order to become an extraordinary person, one must do something extraordinary. And doing extraordinary just requires dedication and commitment and honesty on one's part. Right? Facing challenges, overcoming all the obstacles, accepting challenges and giving best. That is what is the essence of sacrifice. And sacrifice makes one become the best in the end. That is what has happened in this chapter. So here, what's the name of the doctor? So the doctor's name is Dr. Andrew. Come on, tell the names of the doctor at least properly. Dr. Andrew. Manson. So Dr. Andrew Manson, what kind of state he was in on that particular day when this miracle happened? Uh, he was both physically as well as mentally, or you can say emotionally exhausted. Physically exhausted because he had spent his whole day in the clinic. He had spent his whole day in the, uh, in the hospital with Dr. Edward Page. There is another character, Dr. Edward Page. He was, Dr. Andrew was Edward Page's assistant. So he had spent the whole day with Dr. Andrew Page in the clinic. And uh, afterwards, he had a, a dismal evening with his beloved Christine. So there is another character, Christine. So she was his beloved. So he had an, uh, you know, he had a dismal evening with her because they might have had some argument over some issue. So he was quite disappointed with her. And when he reached home somewhere in the midnight, then he was physically exhausted and emotionally as well. So at that time, he just needed rest or he just wanted to sleep. But the minute he reached his home, he saw, yes, whom did he saw? Whom did he see waiting for him? Mr. Joe Morgan. So he saw Mr. Joe Morgan waiting for him at his gate. So when he saw him, Joe Morgan came to him and informed him, told him that his missus, that his wife was expecting and uh, was uh, and, and needed. And she wants that only Dr. Andrew Manson should see her. So that is the meaning is that Joe Morgan's wife had faith on Dr. Andrew Manson. So though Dr. Andrew Manson was a novice, he was not a really very uh, experienced doctor but he, but you cannot do anything with one's faith so joe morgan took told this um, you know man to come to his house because his wife was expecting and moreover they were getting they were about to get the child after 20 years of their marriage so it was going to be a very very uh, you can say crucial moment for them doctor agreed though it was midnight he was very tired Yet he could not say no to him because the doctor's 
they don't know how to say no to their patients. So though he went inside and just picked up his bag and all and accompanied him to his house. So when he reached his house, when Dr. Andrew Benson reached his house, Joe Morgan stayed out and let him go inside. And inside he saw that uh, uh, Suzanne Morgan, uh, the one who's, uh, who was to be treated, she was uh, also having with her her own mother and uh, one midwife was there. So both the midwife and uh, the mother and even Mrs. Uh, Su uh, Suzanne Morgan, they were all very, you can say, keen about getting the child. Okay, especially the mother of Suzanne Morgan. She was like a very anxious about getting the child who should be hale and hearty. Uh, and the midwife was also there who was looking at doctor's face and the doctor could make out that there was some time for the delivery to take place. So he, so he told them like some time is there. And meanwhile, the mother was like apprehensive, like maybe the doctor would go back home and uh, that she did not want. Why didn't she want that the doctor should go home? Because she was afraid that in case there is some problem in the absence of doctor, then uh, they won't be able to do anything. So she didn't want the doctor to leave even for one minute. So she offered the doctor a cup of tea. Doctor had that tea. Uh, and during this time, the doctor was sitting in the, in the kitchen uh, where otherwise it was pin drop silence. It was midnight. Only three kinds of sounds were audible. One was the sound of the fire. Second was the sound of the TikTok of uh, Joe Morgan's shoes. So meaning is that he was not inside. Even then from outside, you know, he was so much impatient. He was so restless. He had been walking up and down the street. And there was third sound. What was that sound? TikTok of the clock. So one of... Uh, So three sounds, otherwise there was pin drop silence. And these three sounds were also the sounds which otherwise you are never able to listen. Okay. So it means that uh, how stark the night was, how dark the night was otherwise. Anyways, the time passed. And uh, by the time it was about four o'clock, the delivery took place. The child was born, but it was a stillborn child. And uh, at that moment, when he wanted to attend the child, he wanted to see like what had happened to the child. He saw that the mother's condition was very critical. She was uh, like uh, weakening. Her pulse was uh, dropping. So he had to think whether he must attend the child or the mother. But without a second thought, he uh, handed the child over to the nurse and switched to mother. So he gave her injection and whatever the required dose medicine was to be given, he gave her. And uh, while doing this, her frantic movements are quite no notice worthy. The way he was uh, doing it so fast, the way he was so active, that is quite praiseworthy. Had he been not so fast, then maybe the result would not have been that positive. So sometimes in order to do the needful, you have to uh, one needs to be very, very active, more than one can ex ever expect. So anyways, it was uh, like, it was quite a cold night, but uh, because of his frantic efforts to save the mother or the child, he was uh, sweating profusely. Anyways, after his, after the mother's condition became a little normal, he asked the nurse to give him the child. The nurse uh, was quite upset because she pointed out she just gesticulated that the child was under the bed. So actually, because the child was still born, it was almost a dead child. So the nurse had kept the child under the bed. And uh, the doctor didn't even wait for the nurse to hand him over the child. He himself knelt and uh, took the child out, which had been kept on sodden newspapers by the nurse. So he just picked up the child and... Uh, uh, while sitting only, he didn't he even forgot to get up because he saw that the child was very finely formed. It's all parts of body were perfect. It, uh, its skin had become white, blanched. And that white skin was an indication that the child had uh, underwent lack of oxygen. 
so it was a case of asphyxia which had made the child become stillborn and he had learned it somewhere that somewhere this case was treated in a different way so he instantly got up and asked the nurse to bring two uh, jugs of water two ewers of water one with hot and one with cold water the nurse uh, pleaded him not to do with uh, not to do anything with a dead child but he just ordered her because he did not have time to tell her exactly what he wanted so the water two basins of water were brought one hot one cold and he started dipping the water dipping the child alternately once in cold water then the then in hot water hot water means it was a lukewarm water not very hot so he started dipping the child once in hot then in cold alternately so this way he did for about half an hour so during this half an hour he's he was sweating profusely his uh, you know uh, sleeves were you know they also dripping water but uh, he did not stop and in between the nurse again pleaded him to stop tampering with the dead body because uh, ethically one should not do anything wrong with the dead body dead body should not be tampered that is an, that is that those are ethics but doctor did not give any heed to her and he kept on doing his best and finally he make the child lay on the blanket and pressed his chest and uh, he was heaving during this time when he was frantically doing these things the doctor was heaving he was breathing very fast out of exertion but the irony was that the child was not breathing the child for whose one breath he was like doing so much the child was not breathing and he was heaving so fast but in the end after about 30 to 40 minutes when he was almost done then he wanted to give one more trial he thought like let me give one more last trial so the last try he gave and the child started there was a little sob there was a little the child's chest started throbbing so the doctor got uh, motivated and he kept on he went on and on and eventually the child gave a cry feeble cry so the child was started crying and that was the ray of hope for everybody and the doctor also smiled so the child was all right with the feverish or the frantic efforts of the doctor and uh, finally he handed over the child to the mother and he just left the place and when he had come in that house it was a very neat and clean room and by the time he left the house it was all a draggled mess but that was not his problem he told the mother and nurse that he would take the things later on he just went off and when he left the house then it was morning and uh, the people those who had to those who were coming back from the night shift they were on the road so his night shift so he had been uh, he had been there on the on the day shift also and he had done his night shift also and now he was going home okay but he was uh, like happy now that he had done something at last so he was uh, so the satisfaction which he got for having been uh, useful to somebody at last that was a great feeling got it so it was not just the birth of the child it is the birth of a doctor also otherwise this very doctor who would uh, who was otherwise a novice he had he had done something great now and now he would he would be uh, termed as a great doctor in the amongst the amongst the doctors okay and in between uh, when we are talking about that the doctor who did so who did his best what kind of his mental state was at that time there is one more like clue when he was having tea in the kitchen then uh, he was like feeling very disturbed he was emotionally disturbed then also he thought about two people one was uh, edward page and another was bremwell and those two people uh, he got to learn from those two people that marriages end in dismal that marriages are always a failure okay one person had a uh, had his trouble some married life he had given one person had devoted himself to a woman whom he loved a lot 
but that woman left him. Okay, the second one also had a very disturbed life with a woman. So he concluded because of their experiences that his life might not be such because Christine was not of that kind. That is called love. When you are not able to draw inferences from the experience of the others. When you have faith in yourself and when you have faith in the others also. So the doctor was not only the person who was only a trustworthy doctor only. He was the one who also knew how to have faith upon others also. Okay, when you are able to rely upon others, only then the others can rely upon you. So this is about the, his character. But yes, I, my basic purpose to talk about this incident was to mention like he was emotionally disturbed. Even then, he gave his best to his profession. Sometimes some people say, like, I was disturbed because of my family, so I could not do this. These are only excuses. When you want to do your best, you can. Whatever the circumstances at your personal level are, they are secondary. So same is about you people. Whatever your personal life is, that is okay. But when it comes to your student life, you can give your best. Everybody can. Not only you, me, or this doctor. Everybody. So one's personal life and professional life should be, there should be a line between personal and professional life. And when there is a line, we can do justice with both. We can be the best at personal level also, and we can be the best at the professional level also. So that is what this birth is about. It's just not about like how miraculous uh, treatment he was able to give to the child. Here, there is less of miracle and more of commitment and hard work and discipline also. Okay. So we must rise to the action. So as per the time, as per the requirement, we must be action oriented. Then we can forget all about uh, uh, exertion or all about what fatigue or all about emotional disturbances. Right. So the main characters of this story were one was Dr. Andrew Manson, main one. Second, we also got to know about Christine. So what kind of girl is Christine? Lovable, reliable. If this doctor doesn't uh, mind spending his whole life with her, it means that she is worthy of the trust. Okay. So one doesn't uh, become reliable for nothing. If somebody says that I have full faith on you, it means that you have done something that the other person says that you have full faith, that that person has full faith on you. So though we have not met Christine in the story, we only come to know about her through Dr. Andrew Manson's memories only. And we find her quite lovable and reliable also. Okay. Then we also come to know about Dr. Edward Page. So the Dr. Edward Page might have been a great doctor. The one who had this kind of Dr. Andrew Manson as his, uh, you can say, assistant. So the choice of an assistant is also, you know, it also shows you what kind of mental or intellectual level you have. And at the same time, Dr. Edward Page did not have a good family life. At professional front, whatever you are, but when your professional personal life is not that good, that also affects your profession. So then we also come to know about one more character, Dr. Bramwell. So there is one Mr. Bramwell who also had a disturbed life because of his beloved. So whatever the reason. Okay. Then we had one more character. Could you please tell me what is that? I didn't write about her here. Midwife. So what will you talk tell about midwife? She might not have been, uh, she might not have been professionally trained, but she was experienced. Okay. Yeah, she was only experienced, but she did not, uh, she was not that committed as doctor was. Okay. She believed her in the ethics only, but she did not believe in, she did not believe in, yes, she did not believe in the actual ethics of doctors, like give your best till the end. Okay. Never to give up. There is one more character. We were talking about her, Suzanne. 
Suzanne Morgan. So what kind of woman is she? Suzanne Morgan is the wife of this Andrew. What kind of person is she? A devoted wife and a loving dotted mother. Okay, she, it is she who is going to deliver the baby. The stillborn child was born to her. So in the beginning, where she told the doctor that uh, uh, she doesn't want that chloroform be administered to her. Chloroform means anesthesia. She didn't want anesthesia to be given to her. She was ready to bear the pain just so that the child should be all right. She, because she might have uh, felt, she might have been told that the anesthesia affects the child. So she didn't want to uh, undergo any anesthesia also. And the doctor told her like anesthesia won't affect the child. But otherwise, we, what we say it, she wanted the child should be hale and hearty by all means. And for that, she was ready to bear all pains. And that is true uh, with all mothers. All mothers are ready to bear the pains at the expense of their own children. They just want this well-being of their own children for that they may suffer. That is true with all mothers, not just about Suzanne. Okay, there is one more character, mother of Suzanne Morgan. So if Suzanne Morgan was in trouble, if she had some, if she was so upset, then uh, mother was no less. Okay, she was uh, taking care of everything around her. Okay, it was she who handled the doctor. Okay, she kept him awake. She knew what to do at what time. Okay, and moreover her praying hands, her hands uh, in prayer. They were also a great motivation for the doctor to do his duty the best. Okay, the doctor could do his best because he knew that that mother, the one who is, you know, for whom the grandson really means a lot, he was motivated to do even better. So there are so many silent characters. Then Joe Morgan, we just met him in the beginning and afterwards he always remained out, okay, uh, moving up and down the street. So his, uh, tick, uh, uh, his moving at up and down the street, that is an indication of like how anxious he was. How much he also wanted a child. Right? So that's all about the story. And the story speaks a lot about the emotions of so many characters. So pre uh, prepare this story once again. Okay, go through the questions. And if there is some doubt, you can ask tomorrow. So tomorrow we'll be discussing the Silk Road also like this.